laughing at? Whoa, look, it's time to go viral. I'm homicidal, I'm killing all my rivals. I'm the man, shit, I put that on the Bible. I spot off on my target, cause you know I got the title. Hey, I'm a Mac too. I told baby, shake that ass like she Apple. She said it's real, so she got my name tattooed. House full, so I hit it in the back room. Whoa, baby said she needed nail, peep the urgency. I want a little Kim before she had the surgery. Leg spread on that hardcore poster. She love twerking, she just do it for the coach. Big dog, big dog, bull massive. Six tray Chevrolet, I'm classic. All these niggas mad at me, that's tragic. The main bitch in the bed, that's graphic. Yeah, we about to go viral. Hey, hey, hey. We about to go. Welcome back to another episode of the Viral Way Podcast. Make sure you're sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. Get us in the algorithm. Best podcast in the world. We stamping that. We skipping the intros. If you know, you know. If you don't, go back to the previous work. You'll get the names. But y'all, y'all already know, man. We've we been going crazy on the internet. Y'all know who he is by now. No need to, you know, introduce ourselves no more. But yeah, I'm going to start this one off with a bang. It's a lot of trends on social media that's been going viral lately on some monkey see, monkey do type shit. You know, these gurus and everybody just saying the same thing. And I'm it's like, am I the only one that's hearing this shit? Like this some bullshit. Three things. One. The why am I out celebrating every weekend because I'm not a when I'm not a millionaire yet trend. I'm seeing video after video after video of social media gurus telling people to not enjoy life don't do nothing be a hermit don't go out visit your family friends nothing don't do nothing until you're a millionaire when the odds of you becoming a millionaire are slim to none everybody's not going to become a millionaire and everybody don't even want to be a millionaire if everybody was a millionaire millions would be nothing it would be an equivalent of everybody having dollar bills in their pocket like they do now so that's number one number two you should be celebrating you just being alive, period. Because life itself has no meaning. It's whatever you give it. So the fact that you have breath in your body and you are still alive, that's enough reason to celebrate. Now, it's a fine line between being disciplined and having delayed gratification with your goals and not going broke to party. That's something totally different. But if you taking care of business, you working, you taking care of your family and your household, and you want to go out to have drinks with the fellas, or you want to take wifey on a date every weekend, there's nothing wrong with that. Stop making people seem like they're not accomplishing their goals because they have balance in life. Life, you need balance. Work and play. It, it becomes unbalanced when the play overtakes the work and you're not getting the work done. So that's, that's the first thing that I got an issue with. Number two, this whole act poor to be rich shit. I've never met a person in my life that acted poor and became rich because you literally become what you think and what you think provokes how you act and how you act. That's the results you get out of life. It's like you going to audition for a movie and you telling the director, hey, I ain't going to act out this role on this script until I get the part. Your dumbass ain't never going to get the part. You have to act the part before you become it. So whatever you want to become, start thinking you already that. If you want to be a doctor, you already start acting and thinking like a doctor. You don't just become a fucking doctor and all of a sudden, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to go to med school. I'm going to skip all these extra steps to become a doctor. I'm not going to do none of that until I am a doctor. Like, your dumb ass ain't never going to get the role. So that's number one. Act like what you want to become. If you want to be a millionaire, start thinking and acting like you are one already. What did Steve Harvey say? Just save up some money and take a first class flight. Sometimes you need that feeling. Go ahead and go buy that expensive belt or that expensive suit. Sometimes you need the feeling to propel you to want to, oh, damn, I can't never go back now. I done felt what first class feel like. Go rent the Lamborghini. Go rent the Bentley. See what it feel like sitting in that driver's seat. That'll give you motivation. Like, oh, yeah, I can't go back to that Honda. I'm finna put in work overtime. So that whole act poor to get rich shit is bullshit to me. And this is the third one, and I'm gonna let the guys chime in on how they feel about this. Rich people aren't flashy. The only people I hear saying this is fucking broke people. Rich people aren't flashy. Who the fuck you think is buying the Lambos, the Bentleys? Who do you think they're, they're, they're promoting this to? Not the broke people. You can't afford it. Who you think is buying the yachts and all this extra shit? Now, I know you'll, be, you'll see somebody like Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates. 
and they dress like a substitute teacher. You go see they don't they don't buy Gucci and this and that. You not knowing that's some unknown uh, Italian designer that we don't know about. That's thousands of dollars. They they dress like a sub, but that outfit probably thousands of dollars. And let's be real, when you black, it's in your DNA to be flashy. You can go back as far as you want. In our history, we always wore gold. We always wore jewelry. We always had dripping swag. That's just in us. That don't mean that, oh, because you do that, you broke. No, that's just us, bro. We we flashy. We know how to dress. We like to look good. That's a part of our culture. But don't think for a second, because they don't have drip, that they not flashy. Bro, they, they got McLarens and mansions and all type of shit. So I'm rambling on, but I'm going to let the guy, how y'all feel about this? The whole. Nah, you want to go first? Go ahead, because I don't know where we starting from. He just ran down a gang of shit. Okay, so from number uh, three one, things. Yeah, no, yeah. Number one, the why am I out celebrating and I'm not a millionaire? They make you feel like if you ain't a millionaire, you can't go out and enjoy life. Two, act poor to get rich. Act poor until you're rich. And three, rich people aren't flashy. Those are three viral topics right now. I think number one, um, life is all about balance. I think that a lot of those clips. They leave that part out because then it's not as captivating. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of them people who make them clips, they're doing it for reaction. But I think life is all about balance. So like you said, if you are putting in the work Monday through Friday and Friday night comes and you want to go out with your girl, you want to have a drink with the guys, you should more than be able to and you shouldn't beat yourself up about it just because you're not a millionaire. I mean, I just think that that type of mindset and not having balance is actually going to have you burn out faster than if you do take a break here and there and then get back to work. You get what I'm saying? Number two, act poor to get rich. Again, I don't think that you can, like you said, act poor and then become rich. You have to implement what rich people do. You have to learn from what rich people do uh, to become rich. I think the only thing that maybe you can say when it comes to acting poor I would say is spending and I don't even mean like certainly you know just spending like crazy or not spending anything at all but at least still having a a mindset of okay let me save some money or let me not go crazy and buy just whatever unless I really really can so I think that's the only thing you could say about sort of being poor or acting poor you know what I mean to become rich is the way you invest and save um and then the third one which was uh Damn, what was the third one? The third one was rich people aren't flashy. Yeah. They don't buy cars and jewelry. Again, like, I think that's something that people have to look at. What is flashy, right? Like, to you, chains and, you know, a watch and a a crazy car might be flashy. But to other people, what's flashy might be considered something completely different. And I think you see that in classes of people who are rich. Like, you see somebody who has all the chains on or whatever, and like you said, you might see Jeff Bezos, and he might have on all black, but it might be $2,000. And to him, that might be flashy because that's what he considers flashy, or he might have a 15-bedroom house or whatever the case is. So I think everybody's uh, depiction on what flashy is is different. But don't get it twisted. Like, these niggas is rich out here, and they're showing it, just not in your overzealous way of wearing a bunch of jewelry. Yeah, so for that first one about going outside every weekend and shit like that, I really don't care too much about what people do with their life. Like, I feel like you should live your life to the fullest regardless because we only here for moments anyway. So live it how you want. If you happy for the way you doing, if you living, getting, I don't give a fuck if you getting faded every day, doing whatever the fuck you're doing, <laughs> you getting money every day, live your life. But on the flip side, do understand there's consequences to your actions of if you do choose to live like that. So I think that's where the balance comes in about living a a more fruitful life, not in the sense of going out every weekend. I think that's maybe where them terms usually come mm-hmm. from, of being able to progress and think more than five years down the line versus just living every day like it's your last, you feel me? Because they say you only live once, but we only die once. So I think that's where a lot of that stigma come in with the YOLO life. And... um. What was the what was the second the, one? The uh, act poor to get act rich. poor to get rich. Like act poor to get rich. See, I never really hear too much about acting poor, but I do kind of understand the stigma of that. It's to more so an extent like do rich people spend carelessly like the motherfucking poor people? You know what I mean? So they'll be like, oh, the rich people are the most stingiest people, or the rich people are the most this, or they might just be the smartest people to not spending shit on dumb shit all the time. 
They might not just be blowing their money on shit that broke people uh, uh, spend their last on. So I think that's where the the difference comes in that far as when it comes to um, when it comes to that type of stigma. And I think even saving money has been kind of like a myth. Now there's nothing wrong with saving a few here and there, but if you if you save if you saved a hundred thousand dollars today. In 10 years, that 100000 is not even going to be worth 100000 no more. So damn near saving money is not even always a good idea. Investing your money. That's what, the, that's what these niggas is doing. These rich people is not waiting to... They got that 100000 wherever they got. They're going to keep investing it. They're going to turn that 100000 to two hundred. How can I turn that 2 to 4 and that 4 to 8 until that, to they get that no, M? And they're going to keep flipping it. They're constantly investing their money. They're not ever... Waiting to just let this motherfucker stack. That's how they're stacking their money by making more money. So I think that's 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 a little difference in our mindsets, changing the mindsets, like you said. And the last one was um, rich people aren't flashy. Oh, it's rich, only it's only broke broke niggas basically. <laughs> rich people not flashy, man. Um, Who the fuck you think buying all this flashy shit? Yeah, yeah. How many broke niggas you know with Lambos and Rolls Royces and all this extra fly shit? Come on, man. See, this is subjective, though, because how many people we know that'll go broke to buy a chain? How many people we know that'll go broke to buy some some jewelry or whatever, or even some clothes to look good and probably ain't got $20 in their pocket? You feel me? That's a fact, So I think that's that's the difference. And what's that shit, man? I wish we had it up here. And it, and it kills me because they got the how to sell to a Negro. And we spend the most money, but we got the least money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the definition of what they getting at. Like a lot of people, I remember I seen Jay say, um, he said, yeah, y'all y'all flashing these stacks, but that ain't money to us. You feel me? And Jay, he probably was doing that once upon a time. I just think he grew to a level. He not telling people not to do that, but he like, nigga, yeah, you flashing that, but that's not no money. So I think that's the difference of... A perspective, but people ain't handling like you said. Go back to us being as our culture. We like to be not just flashy, but we like jewelry. We like finer things, and I believe a lot of people do. So I can't really say I don't know too many rich people like that either, though. That I see that's not flashy, or if they was, this what kills me. This always comes from the broke people that ain't rich telling people how to get rich. First of all, don't tell me how to get rich until you got rich. Don't tell me what rich people do until you rich and you doing these rich things. Because if you ever been around rich people, they doing some rich ass shit. Just a lot of them ain't doing it for the gram because this is regular everyday life. The people you see doing it for the gram most of the time, they're the broke ones. They're the ones that have no balance. So they're the ones that's going broke to look rich. But if I'm rich and like like bro just said, if I can afford to, to fucking spend 80000 on one dinner, 80000 on one hotel stay at some super extravagant fucking uh, 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 palace. You know what I'm saying? Is is that... (laughs) Is that flashy or is that normal? Nah, this is what I was finna ask you, You though. Nah, I was finna ask you, what's the difference between flashy and living? Because we see these rich people, they living. When they on yachts, they're not trying to be flashy. That's That's what what I mean. They're living, though. That's what I'm saying. Now, the difference of when we see people flashy, like, damn, he got too much on. He wearing all this jewelry. He coming through. He buying shit just to go show off to people. Like, nah, this is regular life for some people. Like, they're living. They're not trying to be flashy. If they going to go get that McLaren, like you said, then it's because that's what they want. Not just because I'm buying this and, oh, I can't wait to Wooty Woop see me with this on. I can't wait till they do this. That's what a lot of people do. Buy shit and go broke for people that don't give a fuck about them. That's you know what the I'm cl- saying? That's where the clarification yeah. needs to come yeah. in at. Balance. As long as you're handling your business and you ain't going broke to be fly and flashy... That's cool. But once you're going broke and your kids is missing meals and you're missing house payments, you're missing car payments, <laughs> the lights are getting cut off so you could be at the club with a motherfucking Rolex chain on, that's where the stigma come in at. But come on now, you didn't get rich by going broke to get rich. Like rich people, they got their shit in order. They got their business in order. They got their books in order. They got their investments in order. They can afford to do the shit. Stop telling people to think. You cannot think poor to get rich. That's an oxymoron. You think poor, you're going to act poor, and you're going to be poor. You want to be rich? Start, th- like you said, study rich people. Yeah. Study the Warren Buffets. Study the Jeff Bezos. Study these, these rich, wealthy guys and look at the moves they made. Then reenact what they did to get to where they got. You can't think poor and be rich. It's just not going to happen. But yeah, you know. No, that's a fact. And don't let one guy or two guys you see on Instagram you know what I mean? Dictate how you live your life. Like you're the one that's still living your life 
at the end of the day, as a man or as a woman, you have to make the decision ultimately how you live life and where you apply certain things at to create that balance you need. So it's like, at the end of the day, that's how you got to look at it if, if you're an adult. That's a fact, man. Everybody on social media ain't a guru. Live your life how you want. You feel me? But study the greats if you want to become great. I'm going to say that. But yeah, moving on, man. It's a lot going on in the entertainment industry. Most notably, Shannon Sharp. Every time I look up, he's in the headlines. Club Shay Shay got some drama going on. I like he done become the new Wendy Williams damn near. Damn, and yeah. If somebody got some drama, they go into Club Shay Shay to air it out. Now, let's start with him and Mike Epps. Mm. Me personally, I feel it's all cap. I feel it's all strategic planning. Like, let's say, okay, I got I got some shit going up. You know, I want to get my name out there. Mike Epps was mad he didn't get mentioned in the in, mm -hmm. in the Cat Williams interview. He came out and said it. Now all of a sudden you and Shannon Sharp beefing, and then at the end y'all meet up, shake hands, do it for the gram, bam. Now both y'all names is you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying to me. It's all cap. How y'all feel about what's going on with? I don't think it was cap. I think that two grown men um, let words get the best of them, and then they realized that it looked stupid and they felt embarrassed, and so since they're able to you know what I mean, dictate the public's opinion, they went and turned it around and, and made it seem like they had control of the situation. That's really how I feel. I feel like, it was like again, it was two grown men that got emotional, and then once they realized that niggas was low-key laughing, like these two old niggas is beefing over being like, oh, shit, they switched it up, and then they was like, oh, we we going to duke it out, we cool. And then they tried to make it, like I said, like they had control of it, but I don't so, think they so did. So you felt like Mike Epps really was going to pull the blick man, out? Man, that shit, man, not, that not, shit, that shit, that shit all the cap, out. Maybe not pull the blick out, but I think he niggas said, was talking. Not, he said, I ain't fighting, and there's only one other thing to do when you don't fight. So if you pull up, I'm popping your ass. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he was going to actually pop nobody or nothing like that, but I think they was just talking back and forth over the gram. Like, you see niggas 10 times younger than them make threats and never do nothing either, so... I think they was just talking, but at the same time, they was being for real. This shit cap, girl. I'm getting tired, <laughs> That's I'm getting tired, of, feel, I'm getting tired of all this fake-ass beefs, all this fake-ass shit. They calling each other up, putting shit out there, and got niggas like us talking about it right now. Like, they know what the fuck they doing. What's the name like you just said? Come on tour right now, ain't he? Mike Epps. Just, just, just jumped on tour. tour. Trying, to promote tour. His, trying to promote his shit. Cat, Cat got Monique on tour with him. She Facts. went and did all that shit and went right on tour yeah. with this nigga. All this shit, Cap, cuz. <laughs> they going down here, airing this shit out, got niggas believing it, talking about it, and this shit all. And then they go smile on your face and shake hands. Like, y'all dumb as hell. We just mm. boosted our ratings up off of you niggas, like, every time. The world is more, it's reality TV, cuz. That's what they doing now. That's, that's, that's what the world is coming to. Everything is staged. Everything is fake. Until you start seeing, unless you want one of them niggas that's out there getting slumped, <laughs> I'm not believing it. Like, y'all talking all that high power shit. Niggas ain't squabbling. Niggas ain't doing nothing. As soon as they come, oh, they broke it down like men supposed to do. They probably bleed me for that. I'm not mad if that was the case, and I could be wrong. But I feel like I'm right. So I think everything is smoking mirrors. Everything we seeing out here on TV is smoking mirrors. They live in a whole different reality than us versus people that's down here not in those scenes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people are just like these paid actors, man. Just like you turn on your TV and watch the television, you're watching that when you watch a lot of these shows that you think is real. No, that's facts. Because even what's breaking it down is men. I mean, they might call us ignorant, but I know when men had a problem, we go in the backyard before we shake hands. Like, mm. hey, I, I need a friendly fake. Uh, like, you on TV calling me gay and this and that. Like, that's crossing the line of let's get our names in the thing. Like, you, we can joke back and forth. But bro came out and was like, oh, man, he gay. A lot of niggas did. Somebody else just came out did, today man. and said, man, he gay. He got his little gay stylist at, at courtside of every game. And, I mean, what grown man call himself Shay Shay? That's damn near crossing the line. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we finna get this out the way. We can shake hands after this. But, nigga, we got to lock up. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, five minutes, however you want to do it. I know he's a big-ass nigga, but, hey, you a man, it ain't no turning it down. But you do call you another think, nigga gay? Yeah, I need that. I fuck is you it. talking about? And then, like bro just said, all of a sudden, five minutes later, we shaking hands, picture go up on the gram, tour dates, right after the mm. picture. Come on, cuz. Okay, yeah. Stop playing. We know what the fuck going on. It's free publicity. You want to be popping? Call Shay Shay gay. Say he gay. He going to come out and say, man, I'm pulling up. And ain't nobody pulled up. 
The thing with that industry <laughs> shit, there is no bad publicity, negative or positive. Long as you're talked about, you're relevant. They don't care. They know how to manipulate the media and the world. They've been doing this shit. The same way you can turn on the news and they tell you what they want you to know. People still believe in everything on the news is real. Nigga, they telling you what the fuck they want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> this shit wild. Hey, look, man, we've been dropping a lot of positive content and that shit don't get shared as much as negative. So I'm finna fuck around and diss this nigga. I'm finna fuck around and say, fuck Shay Shay. We could patch it up after. Fuck it. I'll pull up to the couch, drink some yak, drink an old fashioned. Let's, let's, let's get this viral way shit going, man. See, y'all got viral ready to, ready to take, ready to take y'all formula now. This shit, god <laughs> hey, damn. Tell, girl. tell Kyle said, what's the deal? Pull up, nigga. What's happening? But yeah, you think that shit really real? Cause everybody degree, who wants to get their name in the light now says yeah. his name in some form or fashion. See, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I'm more so looking at it like after the two interviews went viral, now people are just coming out and throwing jabs at him because he's starting to go viral. What because made them have beef? Who? Mike Epson, uh yeah. Shannon Sharp, because he called he came out and called him gay. So he just came out the blue and called him gay. He came out and said that because, and again, I think this is why I think it's realistic, because now that he's had the publicity and the, the gain and subscribers, et cetera, whatever from the last two interviews, um, pretty much people want a piece of that now. And now that they can't have a piece of it, that's where you come, where, where you see, uh, what's his name, Mike Epps coming out and being like, oh, this is kind of messy. Because he's not the only person who said that. But y'all got to remember, Mike Epps is a comedian. Yeah. This is what comedians do. This but, is, this is they entertain, they do shit like this. Yeah. All these comedians doing the same shit. They, they talk about somebody, get the shit stirred up, and then now they they capitalizing off of it. Like he just said, Cub mm -hmm. wanted Cat to say something. This was all leading up to that. Why you ain't say nothing about me? You know what I mean? You could have got me viral. Now mm -hmm. he made himself viral, nigga. I got, by going after the nigga that he wanted to, you to speak on him about. See, it, I'm looking at it more so like after he said that, because he's a comedian, he says shit all the time. I don't think he really expected Shannon Sharp to say something. I don't think Shannon Sharp is used to everybody having... His name in their in, in their in his mouth or, or his name in their mouth. So I think he jumped out emotionally because he's not used to it. And then when he did, that's when Mike Epps said what he said. But then I think right after that, they was like, "We kind of we kind of we kind of tweaking. We is, I'm 55 years old. Like, well, I'm really finna pull Shannon, up and catch a fade. Like, Shannon nah. Sharp is a three time Super Bowl champion. They've been speaking about that nigga since he probably been out the womb playing football. Yeah, for sure. But I think the publicity yeah. compared to a, like a NFL person to a media personalities two different levels of 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 media and media coverage he's the head nigga in charge right now as far as media goes yeah. right now so right. everything if you want the biggest platform is channeling through shannon right now cat williams put the spotlight on him every day somebody's throwing a shot at him or trying to get on his shit and this is how you know it's cap because he hit him up to do an interview first. And then came on lying like, yeah, Shay Shay begging me to get on his shit. That's when he like, man, I'll drop the DMs. All right, yeah, you know, I did ask to get on his shit, but he gay. Like, come on, cuz, you're doing anything <laughs> to get in the limelight and get a piece of that. If Shannon was smart, he'll start ignoring these niggas and they'll fade to black. Mm. I even seen niggas dissing fucking uh, Dave Chappelle for trying to uh, squash the shit, saying, damn, cat, you didn't have to air us out. We trying to get money. Let's do this behind the scenes. Like, let's talk behind the scenes. Let's not air each other out as black men and Wooty Bam. Yeah. Niggas came out and said, fuck you, Dave. I know some shit about you. Like, it's just a mess right now between the comedians. Everybody beefing. So, like bro said, I think they all cooking this shit up behind the scenes. Okay. But it's getting we to a point. We get each other lit. I think, I think it's getting to a point where some people is tired of it because they feel like blacks is the only ones who do this, who degrade each other just to stay on or stay relevant. Like, and that's the whole thing Dave Chappelle was getting at. Like, y'all got to keep bringing each other down just to do whatever y'all do. And he like, man, I got dirt on everybody. If that was the case, I would have been aired y'all ass out. Speaking yeah. of bring, bringing yeah. each other down, nothing to do with the topics I had today, but the fact that you just said that made me think of this. Scotty from suburban L.A., stop playing with the city, cuz. I see all them underhanded shots you be taking on that fucking Instagram, dissing Long Beach. Every time something got to do with Long Beach, you the first nigga throwing jabs. And I'll be reading the comments, too. You talking too. about Scotty? Scotty Pippen? Nah, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The little light-skinned nigga. The, uh, he run the suburban L.A. page. And it's crazy 
Because I hit the nigga up to come get on the show. Because I'm like, damn, bro, you got a good lane for L.A. Even though they saying you not from L.A., you putting the spotlight on the West. You got one of the biggest platforms on social media. So I'm like, hey, come chop game. You feel me? But every time Long Beach is mentioned, Cub throws a little dart. Like, oh, Long Beach niggas is weird. Or Long Beach this. It's always some weird shit. Shout out to Vince Staples. His show just aired. And he was getting a lot of good reviews. And the first thing Scotty do... Man, the show was mid. They like, damn, nigga, it been out for a day, twenty four hours. There's no way you even watched that. Like, let it marinate first. You just come out and hate on another black man, even if it was mid. Just shout the nigga out. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck did you have to come say the show was mid for? This a black a young black man from the land. He from the west. He from Long Beach to be specific. But outsiders, they look at all this shit as L.A. They don't know Long Beach, L.A. It's all L.A. So when you shitting on Long Beach. You shitting on L.A. damn near to the outside looking in. But just know that I know, cuz. Like, I don't know what beef you got with the city. Nigga done fucked your bitch because we do a lot of that. A lot of niggas hate us because we fuck a lot of niggas bitches. Or homie done beat your ass, ran your pocket, something. Whatever beef you got, let us know, cuz. We, we can get to the bottom of it. But nigga, stop speaking on the city in a negative light. I just, I see that shit a lot, bro. Just know that I know. Knock that shit off. And I'm speaking for the whole Long Beach, nigga. East, West, North. I don't give a fuck where you from, nigga. But this East Long Beach, though. But yeah, moving on. It's some other shit going on. How y'all feel about the Desi Banks interview? Matter of fact, he just went viral oh, going say, on Shay Shay. That's yeah. what I mean. His he just went viral or, going or, or, on Shay Shay. His interview or the part of the interview that's going viral the, about the girl leaving him and all part that. The part of the interview about his uh, girl, I guess, leaving him while he was on the come up saying... This comedy shit ain't, ain't cracking. We got bills. Get a get a get a job and do this shit on the side. Put him out two three in the morning. Sent him to granny house, mommy house, wherever the fuck he went, and he wind up popping and becoming a millionaire. Was she right or wrong? Y'all agree, disagree? Uh, How y'all feel? You ain't be honest, one hundred percent honest. You a grown man, Desi. Once you get to be a grown man, you can't expect nobody to 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 wipe your tears for you. You can't expect nobody to 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 shoot bail to help you. Everything falls on you, one hundred percent. You with a woman, y'all staying together, you can't pick up your end of the responsibilities. Hey man, I gotta go. Cause I'm not, I didn't come into a relationship to completely do something for somebody else, especially not from the woman's point of view. They ain't never getting in a relationship to just be to just be a nigga's, you feel me, helpmate. So in that situation, it was right for her to leave. And more than likely, that's the fuel you needed to get on your shit even more. So that's kind of how I look at it. I feel like I feel like she was bullshit. At the end of the day, you put cuz out. You probably just didn't like her off the dribble anyway. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he said he was working and giving up his whole entire check to try to pull his in instead of believing in him and having faith in him and help him progress or watch his self progress. Everybody don't always just boom from the beginning. I bet she's sick now. I, I guarantee she regret not fucking with her or seeing her vision through. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like he was just being a bum. Cub was working. He was trying to do what he was doing. The job probably wasn't paying enough. The money wasn't kicking in fast enough, and that's what they do. They leave your ass until you on. And this is exactly why niggas like when they get on and have a choice of bitches, they do what the fuck they want to do because women never stay down for the come up. And the ones that do, you got people like Denzel that's got these 40-year relationships. This is why these relationships don't last nowadays because bitches is not there for the long haul. They there. If you're not on now, it's over. And what's the point of even doing what I do if you couldn't stay down with me when I was shitty? You know what I'm saying? So y'all can say what you, niggas can uh, bleed me for it, but I think you should have had more faith in Cub. If you didn't believe in Cub, you should have never been with Cub in the first place. You should have never be, even been allowing that. You shouldn't have chose that. <laughs> but if that's the case, but Desi, he did, he 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 won. Oh, that was no. the ultimate thing for oh, him. No, you yeah. feel me? Like you said, that was the fuel he needed. That was a lesson he needed to learn to never depend on these bitches. Do your thing, and now he up. This is my take on it. When you understand the nature of women, you're not even mad. It's like women yeah. <laughs> sit at the finish line and fuck the winners. They get with the winners. They don't care about the work you're putting in. They don't care how many shots you're shooting in the gym, how many sleepless nights you got planning. They don't care about none of that. The nigga who's putting on the jersey and he's on that starting, that starting five and he's out there winning championships, that's who they want. They don't care how you got there. They don't give a fuck. They're not going to be there on, on the sleepless nights with you grinding. That's, that's not how they're programmed. Women are hypergamous. They want... 
equal or above. The second that she feels like you dead weight or I got to help lift you up and you ain't lifting me up, she's gone. Understand that. She's gone. She got to look up to you. Dude, your woman looking down, it's over with, bro. Especially if she getting hollered at by niggas that's up here mm. and she trying to stay low to you. Bro, she has no faith in your dream. It is probably less than 5% of women that's going to really stay down for the stay down, for the come up. And if they do, it'll be for a short amount of time. You better crack in a short amount of time. <laughs> Especially with social media, it's over. Before social media, yeah, you could find them chicks. Like he said, Denzel White. But Denzel White wasn't on the ground. Now, what about... Uh, Denzel White didn't have Will Smith over here with the Fresh Prince. What about Kendrick? Yeah, Kendrick, Kendrick too. Kendrick, yeah, Kendrick girl too. stayed down with yeah. him, right? Like yeah. I said, it's always an exception to the nah, rule. Nah, you right. But in yeah. general... Most you should, people you shouldn't be staying down. No, nah, you shouldn't be expecting that. Down. Yeah, you shouldn't She's be expecting gone, that. Nigga. Yeah. But you won in the end. Yeah. You won. Classic story. She didn't stay down. Your dream cracked. You the millionaire, like bro said. You know she regretting it. I'm seeing women that's that's mad that he made it. Like, oh, this is the tell, this is the tall tale loser story of revenge story. I seen that. Yeah, yeah. I seen that. Like women tweeting for his girl. Like, yeah, this loser ass nigga, she won anyway. He was a loser coming up. So what he made it? Like, bitches is mad. He I made think it. I, what I think though about Desi was always a winner. He knew he was a winner. That was the difference. Y'all didn't know he was a winner. And and, and, and yeah. that goes back to yeah. what I said about having the mindset of this is what I am. He had the mindset of I'm making it with this comedy shit no matter what. I'm successful no matter what. The success just ain't here yet. The money ain't here yet. But in his mind, he knew he was going to get there. So he acted like he was there. And he eventually made it. What'd he say killed him? He tried to tell her some shit about it. Like when they was laying down, she told that nigga to go to sleep or some shit. <laughs> hey, man. He tried he to said, tell her about the dream. She it, like, go to sleep. Go to sleep, bro. I don't want to hear that bullshit. He ain't hey, knew after that. Don't ever like, speak about shit again. That nigga like, yeah. hey, babe, is this joke funny? Man, yeah. fuck them yeah. jokes, yeah. nigga. Go get a job, nigga. UPS yeah. is hiring. Right. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, like what you said, like, you know, it's in the nature of women to want to be taken care of, not take care of, you know what I mean? Not take care of somebody else. So I think that, and I mean, now I hope he look at it and he understands that a little bit more. Like this was always in the, in the cards if you didn't get your shit together fast enough. And like you said too, there's going to be that, that 5% of women that stay down and that do do it, you know? So when it when it doesn't happen, I mean, you shouldn't be that surprised. You should be like, And they okay. shouldn't be surprised when they ain't getting no motherfucking rings. Because you ain't, <laughs> you know? you ain't with me shooting in the gym. You ain't getting shit. Yeah. And they shouldn't be surprised that that nigga got his pick at every bitch he want. Don't be surprised. Yeah, he yeah. chilling now. It's all good for him. Yeah. Listen, this is why I tell... They hate, my, they hate my views on this. But when a man makes it from where he came from to where he is now... It's not a woman on the planet that's going to dictate what I do now. You just enjoy the ride. If you are lucky enough for me to choose you, enjoy the motherfucking ride. But don't think you finna dictate nothing as far as monogamy going on. It's not happening. I'm living life to the fullest. I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor. If you stay down for the come up, I got you forever. I'll never forget that. It ain't a woman alive that's going to ever come over you because you stayed down when I know for a fact most wouldn't. So the ones that do, you earned that spot. You got that spot forever. But just know if you didn't and you coming around after the money and after the fame, you're going to get handled accordingly. Like bro said, ain't no motherfucking rings coming. The rings is for the ones who stayed down for the come up. But I know the nature of women. They chase the success. So I know you coming when these millions come. So don't be surprised when I treat you like just another one on the roster. That just is what it is. Shout out to Desi Banks, man, for, for believing in yourself and not listening to your girl. Because most, most men would have caved. Dream would have killed them Like, right damn, there. man, I yeah. feel like a loser. My girl don't believe in me. I'm going to just go get a job. Fuck it. Let me help with these bills. He and was already. He was, he was working, though. Curl was working. He was working? He was working. Giving up the whole check. Yeah, she didn't know. Curl came up. I didn't see that, nigga. He said, I was giving that, him that, 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 my whole check, Curl. Like, that's wild to me. It ain't like enough. That's why that wasn't enough. You ain't making enough. You better go get a better job. That's what they telling Curl. Go get another one. So at that point, it's fucked up on her. Like, I'm I'm working and I'm chasing my dream. But you ain't even believing in this part. You like, fuck that, nigga. You need to be paying for my house, paying my bills. You ain't doing this. That's wild. That's, that's, what I'm saying. that's something I say is wild. It's not mad that she did what she did. She did what she felt was better for her and end up probably losing. Ain't no telling what she on. As yeah. long as she didn't try to double back. Yeah, she probably if you Stay, you know stay with your guns. Back. You didn't believe in it. You left. He popped. Congratulated <laughs> from a distance. But if she tried to double back, 
Oh yeah, bro. That's how your moment. How your villain moment? Man, Cub brought that up to shit on her. No, for sure. Yeah, 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 ain't talking about that. Yeah, that bitch left me. Yeah, you remember that? You Cub said he was crying. Yeah, sick. And at two in the morning, nigga, he in the car sick. She I made like, you feel like less than a man at your lowest. She don't even deserve a hello. Don't even read the DM at your highest. Fuck that bitch. Go fuck every friend around her. (laughs) Fuck every cousin around her. (laughs) Fuck every sister she got. Every fine auntie. Fuck the granny if the granny ass fat enough (laughs) fine enough. Make her feel like she made you feel. Matter of fact, you don't even got to do that. The success is doing that. That's why they say success is the greatest revenge. Every day she see you on TV, she's sick. Every day she scroll the gram and her friends is reposting how funny you is. She's sick. Nah, cause she gonna be telling stories that I used to fuck with him, and her friends gonna be telling stories of how stupid she is. That's a fact, bro. Hey, believe in your believe in yourself though. To everybody that got a dream, God, the only one that God blessed you with the vision. Your brother, your cousin, your auntie, your wife might not see your vision. God blessed you with the vision. So stay on your path because they're not gonna believe in you. Until you make it become true and they can see it for themselves. But your vision is your vision and your vision alone. So don't expect nobody out here to be supporting your vision the way you going to support it. You got to show up every day. Don't be expecting them to be reposting your music, your content or none of that. Because they're not going to believe it until you sit next to Kanye or Drake come on your podcast. Or you got a feature from fucking the, whoever the hot little baby. Now they believing in your shit. Even though I think that's fake as fuck, if you ask me, I don't care story, yeah. if I don't believe. Nigga, if you my bro and you trying to make it, I'll retweet your shit. Even if it ain't hot, <laughs> fuck it. Somebody yeah. might think it's hot. Somebody, yeah. I might that's not fact. even watch your podcast, but I'm going to repost one of your clips just to help you get seen. And it don't take nothing. It don't take nothing but that. It don't. But that's a hard pill to swallow for niggas who out here trying to do something is that, you know, people are not going to fuck with it. And if you're doing anything, you know what I mean, based off of what other people are going to do or how they're going to react to it, then you shouldn't be doing it anyway. So what about the niggas who be rapping you'll know for like 13 years that ain't that ain't making no noise? Oof. Do y'all do y'all still support that or do you just tell them or is it hating like you tell them like, uh, just, just just hang up the jersey, bro? Keep doing your thing. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep pushing your pen, nigga. Keep, cause, hey, look, because this is the crazy, though. This is the crazy part, bro. How many stories you done heard of a, a niggas like, bro, I've been doing this 10 years, on the 11th year is when it I cracked. cracked. Yeah. Nah, but how many of them always been elevating? So they've been seeing they've been seeing elevation. And some niggas we know that's still getting 500 views or 200 <laughs> views on the video, you feel me? Kevin Samuels, prime example. Bro spent the first five years of his YouTube career critiquing men. Nobody watching this shit. Nobody talking about him. He wasn't going viral. We seen no clips. We never heard of bro, ever. They started going viral after he made it. But bro, matter of fact, I want to shout out every homegrown content creator that does not use celebrities and they make shit happen. People don't realize how hard that is. I want to salute all of y'all. I want to salute y'all and myself. Because we one of them. We don't use the big names to get the clout. You know how easy it is to pay a celebrity to get on your shit and everybody going to watch for them? You know how hard it is to get people to watch for you and they don't know who the fuck you are? (laughs) You got about 10 seconds to (laughs) intrigue them to keep watching your shit. Because first of all, they're like, who the fuck is this? Let me see what he's talking about. 10 seconds. (laughs) You ain't saying something good they want to hear? Out of there. They out of there. So for anybody who built a lane on their own, salute to y'all. Be- that's another topic I wanted to get on about all these celebrities that, you know, maybe they rapped, they played ball, mm-hmm. they acted, they did whatever. Now that that lane dried up, they jumping in the podcast Podcasting. lane. So now with the homegrown people, where they can elevate, it's taking that much longer because you got celebrity after celebrity after celebrity just jumping in the lane that you mm-hmm. in and they got celebrity buddies they got the number one thing you need they got the connects they saturating it they're saturating it so much so and it's crazy because like usually it's just regular people saturating it but you have celebrities saturating it which is like making it even harder to come up over their shit like you said because i could go get whoever and not only that you have celebrities that are taking the route of doing more so homegrown content where they're getting they're paying random people to come and interview that have crazy stories. And so that's a route, too, that the regular podcasts have that they really don't have no more. Because now I can go pay a nigga and wherever, 500, he come tell his life story and, and my page go viral. So that shit happens a lot, too, now. 
They got the money. Yeah, they got everything. They, they got the money for the for the best equipment, the best the best production crew. They got the money for the best promotion. Like, bro, if you are in this lane making a name for yourself, I don't give a fuck where you at. Pat yourself on the back because this shit is not easy, bro. It's not easy. It's this is one of the most saturated lanes in any industry. And you competing with the goddamn celebrities now. Not only that, too, the stigma around podcasting. Like, niggas here, you do a podcast and they already immediately kind of like iffy about it. Like, more so than being like, okay, you provide game to the culture. No, they like... You do a podcast, like, let me see what it's really about. So it really is, um, you know, even with the stigma and with the time surrounding podcasts right now, if you are doing it, pat yourself on the back because it's not easy to keep going. And if you do organic topics, triple salute to you. Because it's one thing to come on here and be messy, get a bunch of drunk females, have them be messy, <laughs> or have fake fights and script this shit. Or just talk about celebrities all day. That's easy. But when you come with organic shit and you got people watching and you making a name, man, salute to y'all, man. Salute to all of y'all. But yeah, let's get into some more, you know, high power serious shit. Th th this one I want to, I want y'all views on this. Can black people be racist? <laughs> I told you I can't be racist. <laughs> I'm black. I'm as black as they come. Cause I can't be racist. In the way y'all say, I only don't like what don't like me. That's where it always stems from. You feel me? It's no race that I didn't like, that I did not go against, that didn't go against me first. You know what I'm saying? Because I, it's, it's, it's white people that probably don't like me and I don't like y'all. And vice versa, even with my own race. You feel me? So I don't feel like we could be racist because all the hate is towards us. The whole world hate us. You feel me? So if we are racist, it's not necessarily like, Black people wake up and just be walking down the street sometimes and be like, this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Or you feeling some type of way all the time. But it's more so the energy that we get from other people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, nigga, I got to be on bullshit. But I don't I don't see us as just being racist. We just been hated for all our motherfucking lives. So it forces us to, to project certain things on you. No, I don't think black people can be racist. I think we're prejudiced, though. Meaning that I think we have a lot of preconceived notions about other races that you know, maybe we don't know or we know one person from that race and we make the generalization, which everybody does that. But I don't think we're racist because from a systemic point of view, how can we be? And then when you even think of like the Black Panthers, the civil rights movement, uh, Nation of Islam, they've all collaborated or have had people directly within their organizations that have been of another color. So we've never even discriminated on that level. Then you take it to a social level. Like when you go out there, there's so many black groups that got the one white boy or the one Mexican boy compared to the, the all white group with the one black boy or the all Mexican group with the one black boy. You see it in black groups more that the other races are accepted if they're just cool people. So I don't think we can be racist, but I definitely think that we can be prejudiced. And that just means, you know, having shit to say about other races, but that also comes from a defense mechanism of being like, these motherfuckers don't fuck with me. So let me, not fuck with them. They say this about me, so let me have something to say about them. It's the conditioning. Yeah, they already don't like us, so it forces the ones that do think they racist or you do think black people are racist is because they've been conditioned to to try to be like the oppressor. That's been you've been oppressing, and now they they feel like we need this is like you said a defense mechanism to now I need to hate you because y'all know you hate me, so it's fuck y'all basically. It's going to get me killed, but I think black people are, are, are racist to their own kind more than anybody mm. else if we're going to talk about being racist. Talk about it. That's like, true. Talk when it, about it. When it, it comes to just about the, the feud between us, when it comes to colorism or classism, whatever the case is, like we're always beefing within each other based off of things like that. You know, you don't hear it said as much, but you used to hear niggas saying, oh, she got good hair, he got bad hair, all different types of things that we judge each other based off of. So I think a lot of times we do it more to ourselves that's than a, that's a, that's a That's a great standpoint, but the only thing that make me challenge that a little bit is because I've been to different places. Mm -hmm. And by me being in different places, it's not the same effect, but it is different when I'm out here. Like far as you might see, you might see a, a Latino, you might see a white person, but you see a black, it's like you automatically like you, you grill facing, you automatically ready to trip. It's like, damn. <laughs> but sometimes you have to check yourself like I'm already ready to trip on this nigga for nothing too. But cause the land of gang banging, you know what I'm saying? Majority of what we beef with is our own. 
But even you got to look at black niggas crazy because they going to look at you crazy before they look at another race crazy. You'll see them turning up on each other before we turn up on something else. We black, gonna turn up on everything, but nah, just sure. know we we get on each other more than anything. Yeah, blacks are the, to me, blacks are the most loving, accepting, and forgiving race to every race but our own. We love everybody. We invite everybody to the barbecue. All you gotta do is dress like us, talk like us, and dance like us. You invited to the barbecue, we fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a nigga like you said, you ready to turn up on him? You don't even know him. You just see him. It's like okay, I gotta put. You feel me? Because I feel like he finna be that way. Land of the gangbang is how we was programmed. Hate ourselves. But I don't believe black people are racist. I just don't. I've never had a conversation in all my life with a black person that looked at somebody else and said, I don't like him because of the color of his skin. I want to stop him from living because of the color of his skin. I want to stop him from being able to get a job because of the color of his skin. I want to stop him from being able to live where I live because of the color of his skin. I've never heard it. I've never seen it. The only thing I've seen is reaction. Y'all don't like us? Fuck y'all. Y'all treat us bad? We're going to treat y'all bad. Like all these videos of black kids jumping white kids going viral. Y'all ignore all the goddamn videos that's the opposite. Y'all put that at the bottom of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. For every video of little black kids jumping a white kid, I can pull 10 of white kids jumping black kids. But that doesn't get shared because that doesn't fit the narrative of blacks being animals. When we show videos of y'all being animals, y'all ignore it. When we go down history of y'all being animals, y'all ignore it. Nah, it's some type, for them, it's some type of condition. It's <laughs> you know something, what I'm saying? Oh, he might need, he might, he might got ADHD. He might need to take some meds. It's, it's something else. It's always like an excuse. excuse. Yeah, it's always an excuse. Exactly. When it comes to us, oh, that's just how they is. You, know, that's you, can't, the, you can't be around them. They'll the not act. Always yeah. see. It's always them. That's Damn. the coming always see from the troll accounts. But when it's them doing the same shit, bottom of the algorithm, or like you said, it's a goddamn excuse. Nah, it's always us when we turn up. Then they be yeah. spooked. Now, now you didn't brought the animal out. Now you mad. You shouldn't have been fucking with the tiger or the lion in the first place. Cause he was cool until you brought his ass out the fucking cage. Mm. I think we could be prejudiced, but everybody is, and 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 every prejudice generalization stems from the truth. Yes, we <laughs> love chicken and watermelon. Niggas love this shit. It's a fact. It Niggas would say is, you man. racist. I like. Yeah. I seen the school serve chicken and watermelon for Black History Month, and everybody went crazy. I'm like, wait a minute. We love chicken and watermelon. Yeah, like, oh, what the where? fuck y'all mad about? You know what I'm saying? Asians, they're good at math. Look up the statistics. It's an actual fact. Like every fucking generalization stems from the truth. You that know don't what? make it racist. You, you want know tacos, what, you want them from the Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> you know what, though? We're the only race that has been pushed to... to not fuck with our culture though. You get what I'm saying? Even oh when it Ooh. even when it comes to like how you was talking about we'll get on another black person more so, it's because we've been conditioned by the media and other things to look at ourselves that way as well. So like we see how we act on TV because of media. So then when we see a nigga in real life, it's like, what's up? You get what I'm saying? Kind of the same exact thing because we've been conditioned. So I think I think that's crazy. This is how racist most races are. Anytime we speak any type of black power, let's unite as black people, we're deemed racist and we hate other people. What if white people said that? They've been saying it. And I'm going to say <laughs> this like I always say and I always rebuttal to when they say that. When we say blacks need to procreate with blacks, first thing they say, what if a white person said that? First of all, they started saying the shit and the difference is when we say it, we're not talking about eliminating other races. When you hear white people say, hey, we need to procreate white, our numbers are getting low, they also are the same people saying, hey, we need to kill them N-words over there. Hey, we need to get them wetbacks over there. We need to get them sand N-words over there. They're the same ones <laughs> preaching the hate against everybody else. We don't. We don't give a fuck what y'all do. We just like, hey, we need to get our community together, and they are so deathly afraid of black people getting on one accord, they gaslight us and say you're racist. It's a, it's a difference to... Procreate with blacks to save the race versus procreating with blacks to erase the race. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that goes back to, like you said, with the three generations. They impregnated our women, did a lot of shit, created the, the yellow, created yeah. the 
Everything else, <laughs> no, no shots to you. No, no, no. I'm just saying. They created that nigga. No, they created that nigga. Nah, because they were trying to bleed my foot. I'm just saying, though, but they did these things and so infatuated with our women to act like they really hate us, but y'all want to impregnate them and do whatever y'all do. And now we, we're, we're getting to a point where they're trying to get rid of the, the darkers like me. You know what I'm saying? The more black skin. They don't want to, they don't want to see that. So that's the difference of when he speaks on procreating with mm -hmm. your own race, because at some point they want us eliminated. They've been trying to eliminate us since the beginning of fucking time. Facts. Facts. At what point that y'all hate it? What day did they wake up and say, cuz these motherfuckers, we got to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. I honestly Ten think Michael, keep going my bad. Now nah, go ahead. No, I think the moment they realized that is when, when they, you know, put us through slavery and we still was like trying to be free. Now, even before that, it got to be, because it's like, y'all got to be so amazed of what we know or what we're doing. We must have been tapped in with the meditating, or we must have been tapped in with the universe, knew all this shit, and now it's like, nigga, we need, we need to take all that information. I just seen a video, cuz, where they trying to erase the things that Martin Luther King said out of black history. Like, uh, to stop teaching it, to stop doing certain things. I'm like, wow, that's wild. It ain't even really wild to me no more. It's just, I know they're never going to stop. They not letting up on us. This is my only question. Yeah. Send this to every racist on the planet. What is your hate with black people? Where did it stem from? Now, if, if you are alive today, this is generation after generation of being passed down. But that first generation that kicked it off, what was the hate? Asians don't get this kind of hate. Hispanics don't get this kind of hate. Samoans don't get this kind of hate. Indians don't get this kind of hate. You go down the list of every race, they don't get the extent and the magnitude of hate that black people get. Yeah, they got racist remarks for them. Yeah, they got some racist history that bad things have been done to them. But to the level and the degree that the actual government itself is out to, to, to hate black people and spread that hate, what was it? What kicked that off? It couldn't have been just the skin. Like, what kicked that off? I want to know. When I always talk to a racist person, I say, why do you hate black people? They got a list of uh, shit, but none of it ever makes sense. It's mm -hmm. always like an insult. All oh, the big lips, the, oh, the y'all are dumb, y'all are half human, or yeah. it's always some dumb shit. Y'all shoot up the neighborhoods and all of that. But it's never like, okay, what's the core reason you don't like black people. Mm -hmm. Nah, you gotta What you is get, the reason? You gotta hate what you can't be, cuz that's at the end of the day. Like you said, it make no sense. You hating because you know blacks is down there better at everything. We took over all the goddamn sports. We're gonna take over motherfucking swimming and golf in a minute. We already probably know, but we already <laughs> we got, got golf. the golf. Yeah. yeah. We got golf. Oh, I'm saying I don't even know what sports we ain't took over. You know what I mean? I don't care if it comes to the best engineer, the best uh what technician, the best motherfucking Serial killers to anything you talk about, <laughs> blacks are better at serial killers. <laughs> no, yeah, Wild I am. But look, you can take it however you want to take it. From the best motherfucking drug dealers to whatever. Even though you can take a negative and we turn it into a positive. You know what I mean? We come from nothing and make it something. So they can bleed me for it or insane, but it don't matter. They know, like I say, every fucking time, the greatness in us. So they see that and we don't see it. Before they allow us to wake up, nigga, they're going to keep their foot on our necks, nigga, every single time. That's a fact. And I think um, we were talking about why when we talk about procreating, you know, it's, it's frowned upon for us, but not for them. And I think it's about the intent. Like when we're trying to procreate, our intent is to just make our, our building taller. But, but our intent is to not tear nobody else down while doing it. Facts. And I think that's the problem with white America is that their whole, you know, origin is almost like a f being in fear of being overtaken or being um, less pure or being, you know what I mean, just number two. So their whole intent is to make sure that outside force doesn't break within. And I think that's what we see when, when we see the things that have been systematically put in place. I almost feel like it's like a, like a f foster parent. Like they got you over here to do something and then now you won't go away. So it just it creates a fucked up situation. Like, we don't have any fear of other races per se. Like, oh, our number's getting low. The white people finna take over. <laughs> our number's getting low. The Indians, like, I only hear white people saying shit like that. And it's like, where does that fear come from? Where White supremacy is a real thing. Now, I don't speak with a victim mindset. I'm not sitting here saying the man's holding me down and all this other bullshit. 
like most of us have, are conditioned to say and do and believe. I don't believe none of that shit. But where the fuck is the fear coming from when you look around? White people are, are running shit. That's, that's not a farce. That's, that's not a victim mindset. That's just the reality. We look at the world. White people up here. As far as the government and all that, it's white people. So where's the fear? Where does that shit come from? Yeah, it's crazy. I don't understand. No, it is. I think the fear comes in it comes from the superiority complex. Like of feeling like if you were born and you were given the benefit of the doubt by police, if you were given a, the loan, if you were given a you know what I mean, the 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 first whatever because of the color of your skin, I feel like that creates such a deep superiority complex that you like somebody on the top. You always going to be like kind of looking down and hoping or not hoping, but afraid of somebody coming to take your spot. I feel like that's how white supremacists think. I just think, I think it's a lot of insecurities because even got to be even be small things. Like if we go to the gym Oh, that too. Yeah. They, they, they had something to say about that. I seen one dude, he was, he was, he, he was doing a workout video and then, and a white man commented like, well, if you took steroids for 10 years, I said, that's exactly what the fuck y'all do. Because they feel like in our DNA, or y'all just born like that. Y'all made like that. But even though we in the gym putting in work every fucking day to get mm -hmm. like that, in their mind, it's, it's, it's still a problem. Like, man, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you got to be on something. Like, nah, nigga, this regular. Like, like they, they can't Watch believe. them underhanded com uh, compliments. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see the video. Uh, I, we probably talked about the same video. Dude was like, man, I've been working out for 10 years. I, I, I've been on... Uh, what was the testosterone and steroids? And I finally reached the level of looking like a black man that did ten push-ups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basically yeah. saying like we had like our genetics is so superior. Yeah. We got to just do ten push-ups, but they got to work out ten years, take steroids, TRT, and all this other shit just to look like a normal black man. It's like, damn, bro, that that's like a backhanded compliment almost. But it's like, crazy because I tell them like, come work out with me, and then then let's see if you can put that same work in that you say that we don't do. Let me see if you can do it and see if you even want to get to where we got to. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not going to do it. You, they might can do some burpees, but other than that, nigga, it's over. <laughs> I mean, we do have superior genetics. It's the reason why if you impregnate any other woman, that baby's coming out black. Yeah. Though, so, you fact. know. You beating cotton all but day. Yeah, what, you what you got for us? Now, I know you dying to read something off. I see you looking at that motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on y'all. What y'all got? No, nah, no, nah, come on. Tap in, gang. You know, yeah, cool plan. this is a gangster yeah. party. Tap in. Let's see what we got. Because, you know, I got shit all day. They'd be mad at me for my topics, though. What's going on in there? I got some music industry shit. I got all type of shit, man. Oh, we'll tap into that. Okay. <sighs> Damn, I thought I had it to you, too. This one thing, this one debate I always have with people, and nobody ever give me the same answers. I want answer from y'all. Who had the best verse on freeways, what we do? Well, you know, everybody like freeway verse, but... In your opinion, who had the hottest verse right Man, now? Freeway gonna make me bob more. It's just they, that whole song was a classic though. Freeway, but I felt Freeway words at heart more because I lived what Freeway was talking about. I think so. He probably had the hardest verse. Do you know what song he's talking about? I don't about? know what song, yeah. See, you don't know what we do, man. Uh, I can't talk exactly. music with this Gen Z ass nigga. I don't know why you went there. That's, hey, why, this, I'm yeah, this nigga, that's why I said it. He hate Gen Z. And this nigga acting like a Gen Z. Nigga, what the fuck? You don't know what we do? Girl, like, nigga, who is Freeway? Nigga, yeah, this, you I talking? keep forgetting yeah. this nigga. You think you talking about Freeway Rick? Freeway Ricky? Like, cuz. But yeah, I'm with you on that, bro. I think Freeway, man, just what he was saying is just. It just hit hard. And like you said, I was living when he was rapping. So it was, it just hit hard in the conviction and the bars and every nigga, what will my heat stop in it? And my heat stop working and my heat stop working. I'm gonna rob me a person. Catch a nigga sleeping while he out in the open. And I'm gonna get it. Keep going. Nigga, I was out there with the ear. Nigga, what do you mean? I was with it, with or without. When the sneaks start leaning. Come on, cuz like that. That was just that was different. Jay, he had some shit though with the free beer sticking out, and he had some shit, yeah. but it didn't hit like Beans free. Beans got man. off too, but free was like you. you free said was free, different. Free nigga. spit that like he, he was in his soul, like he was reliving that. Like that's how Freeway was spitting that. Like he came yeah. from the block hungry yeah. and went straight in the yeah. booth, nigga. Like, and Freeway don't get enough love. That nigga dropped a classic. That Philadelphia Freeway album, crazy classic. Shout out Freeway, man. But yeah, what you got for us, man? I can't even talk. <laughs> this nigga want to talk about Lil Pump or somebody, <laughs> I got, all right, a, a tweet from Lil Sean Pump. Croxton. 
It says, if you keep telling little black kids how the system is rigged against them, don't be surprised when they grow up to believe in the failures of the system more than they believe in the greatness within themselves. What y'all think about that? I think that's a fact. Because I got kids, and it's a fine line between giving them the game, lacing them, and subconsciously program them, programming them to think inferior about like themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to tell them about the realistic traps the world set for us as black people and how to overcome them. But you got to figure out a way to do it to not make them feel like it's hopeless. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like instead of that, I try to tell them the greatness in us. I try to tell them the great things that we have done and give them examples of people who have less than them, came from worse environments than them, and overcame that and became great. Mm -hmm. I try to make them read books about these type of things. I try to make them read books about universal laws right now. They laughing at me. What the fuck is this yeah. shit? Like, you know, they don't, don't say what the fuck is this shit, but in their mind, I know they saying that. <laughs> like, what is this? How is this going to help me? I'll try to tell them, look, just, just get the information in your brain subconsciously. When you get older, it'll start to click. You'll start to get it. But yeah, I just think we got to go away from that feeling like we got to walk around the world on eggshells, how our, how a lot of our parents raised us mm -hmm. to make it feel like, hey, when, when the white man come around, look down at the ground, when the police come, type don't shit, even breathe yeah. type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and give you an inferiority complex. Nah, fuck that. Go out there with your chest up, chin out, stand on your own two, on your own ten, you know what I'm saying? And, and live life accordingly to how you want to live it, to reach the success you want to live it. But how you feel about it, bro? Because I don't want to just ramble on all day. Man, I think it's it's more in the programming. So I think it, it's 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 more so in the programming. I would have to turn more so that negative into a positive. I would make them understand, like to an extent of you great, so you are going to be looked at different. You are going to be. It is going to be some people that hate on you. You understand, like. At the end of the day, they hated Jesus. You know what I mean? He 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 showed the most love you can get according, according to their textbook. So <laughs> no, I don't stand You know chance. what I mean? He was great making miracles happen, helping people, healing people, and they hated his ass. So just understand, not saying you gotta compare yourself to Jesus, but understand you are great. And this is what's gonna happen. So you do be aware when they are attacking you or are acting this way, it's because they know you are great. They trying to kill that that lamp up out of you. You feel me? Anytime. It's darkness. The light gonna still shine, and they don't want to see it shining. You ever see like when you first wake up and the, and the blinds coming through the through the window, your eyes is it's too bright. That's how it might be for you when you walk in the room. It's mm -hmm. it's too bright. They can't stand to see it. They gotta close the blinds by any means necessary. So that's what I would make them think. Now, yeah, yeah, I think we have to equip our kids, obviously, with knowledge of self and um, pride in a culture, pride in being black. I think that's one of the first things you have to do before you even get into the injustices of the system, like, you know, being proud of your culture and where you're from and knowing um, the greats in history, once you do learn the injustices, and then on top of that, you being that example for your kid gives them all, I feel like, the tools that they need. You feel what I'm saying? To understand the battle that we have as black people in the world, but also to maneuver through it because now they have a parent at home that they see, you know, Knowing what they know, they see their parent go through life and succeed. So they're going to hopefully try to emulate that and do the same thing. So I think um, parents got to start becoming that, that God-like figure in a way to their kids where they look up to them and they emulate the things they do. And that's how they get through. That's how they get through life. Look, what I, what I, what I, what I do, damn, stuttering like a motherfucker. <laughs> what I do, I try to eliminate race mm. from the conversation. So when we was growing up, they would say, you got to work three to four times harder than everybody else because you're black. I tell them, no. If you want to be a winner, you got to work three to four times harder than everybody else to win. Eliminate the race part. I don't give a fuck if you're black, Hispanic, Asian, white, whatever you are. If you want to stand above your class and your peers, work three to four times harder than them. Do more than what's necessary. I always tell my son this all the time. You get out what you put in. So just because your coach ain't watching and everybody else is walking on that lap, your ass keep running. You're going to stand out. You know what I'm saying? Just because your teacher gave you an assignment two weeks earlier and you know you got two weeks to get it done, don't wait until the night before. Do that shit the first week. Then the second week, 
you can relax. Always do more than what's necessary. Always do more than what's asked for. The world will return that to you. Always keep a positive mindset. Always tell them that because a lot of the advice they gave us was negative. You just looked at everything from a negative lens. Oh, because you black, this. Oh, because you black, that. So now you're walking through life expecting bad things to happen, mm -hmm. expecting bad results, expecting to be treated less than, and accepting it. Because mom and dad told me this is how they're going to treat us. So now I'm accepting it. Nah, fuck that. They're going to treat you like a man. They're going to treat you like a woman. I don't give a fuck what color you is. The man I respect and view life that way. Take the, the color and the race out of it, even though it does matter. But I don't want to just program you to believe You can't make it that. everything. Don't make it everything. You can't make it everything, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, you really, you cannot make it everything. You have to put some, put more stock into hard work, discipline, dedication, mindset. Because if not, then, I mean, that's how you get a, a victim mindset if you don't rely on those, on those things. Like it, a wise man once said, care what other people think and you'll always be a prisoner. You'll always be their prisoner. So if you run around the world... Caring about how they viewing you because you black, you are a prisoner to racism, basically. You're a prisoner to everybody. Well, how these white people viewing me in this restaurant? How these Asian people viewing me in this store? How these Hispanic people viewing me when I'm here? Because you black, bro, who wants to live like that? Yeah. I don't give a fuck how you view me. I mean, I do to a degree, but I'm going to be me regardless of how you view me. Because you're going to view me how you view me anyways. But if you present yourself as respectable, as, as an upstanding, outstanding individual, that's how people going to treat you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, what y'all what else you got, man? What else you got over there? Um, I actually got another topic I want to talk about. And it's a difference in opinion is not hating. So I feel like a lot of times when niggas have a different opinion than somebody else, the first thing people do and they jump out oh, and they you say, hating. You hating. So how y'all feel about that? Everything is hate today. It don't matter what it is, niggas gonna label it as hate. <laughs> it don't if if you say, Man, I ain't like that song, all oh, you hating. You could have just really not liked the song. And it's a difference between constructive criticism and hate. You know when something is hate. You know when it's coming from a hateful place. But it's just today, the world's so sensitive, you can't say anything. Everything is labeled as offensive and everything is labeled as hate. So I don't give a fuck. That's why I named my, myself the villain. I don't care. I'll be the villain. I'll be the bad guy. How you feel about it, bro? Yeah, no, nah, I just, I, I hate that everything is labeled. <laughs> Hmm. Everything everything is labeled nowadays, even when it comes to women or whatever. But I think a difference of opinion is a difference of opinion. But like you just said, you already summed it up. It's a lot of niggas that do be hating, and you know what I mean? But they'll openly hate. Some niggas will secretly hate. It just don't matter. You just They go back to you not caring what people think. If it ain't Facts. affecting you, you know what I mean? It ain't stopping your money, then it shouldn't really matter at the end of the day. No, nah, yeah. You as a person, whenever you have an opinion, you have to be secure enough in it. Um you feel what I mean to stand on that and understand that if you're that secure in your opinion, you're going to run into somebody eventually who is just as secure as you in their opinion. And it might not be the same as yours. So if it's not, then you should be able to disagree without there being some sort of, oh, that's hating or, or this is hate. Now, at times, yeah, there, there's definitely hate, but you can always tell hate from from constructive criticism when it has unnecessary information on it or a certain type of tone to it, that's hate. But if somebody telling you, hey, I don't rock with this, or this isn't good to me, then that's what it is. So we got to get the insecurity up, up out of us, really, too, and just understand that it's going to be a difference in opinion. But even at the same time, a lot of people have a lack of understanding. A lot of people are ignorant, not just necessarily meaning they're stupid, they just misinformed. You know what I'm saying? So their views could be a little distorted at that moment until it may be cleared up. So I just look at it, I look at it from like a bird's eye view. You can't really just trip on it. You see it is down there. It ain't really nothing to be tripping on, fucking your whole day up because somebody disagree with you. At the end of the day, that's their problem. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're making it yours. Facts. People now live so in their little bubble that anything that comes into it that's out like outside of what it what is normally in there, they they just they can't deal with it. They can't process it. A lot, of, a lot of these niggas do be hating. A lot of these bitches do be hating. That's a fact, too. If though. you have somebody, a brother, a cousin, a friend, and you see them trying to do something great, trying to start a business, trying to start a clothing line, they start rapping, they got a podcast, they act, they do anything. And you constantly, day by day, they posting their progress. 
you're never liking none of that shit. You never comment none of that shit. But as soon as your favorite rapper posts some, you double tapping, you liking his shit, putting his shit in your story, tagging him, he don't know you exist, you DMing <laughs> him good shit, bro. Your bitch ass is a hater. I don't care what nobody say. All of that, well, people don't gotta support you. Nah, they don't. But the ones closest to you should. It, it, it don't cost nothing. Y'all will support these celebrities that don't know y'all. Wouldn't piss on y'all to put y'all out of views on fire. <laughs> you niggas is wishing celebrities happy birthday. But your mans <laughs> that you grew up with couldn't get a happy birthday. <laughs> happy C day. Nothing. Like you just scroll past this shit all day like it didn't exist. Like cut don't exist. And it's the nigga that if something go, go on, you gonna call the nigga. <laughs> hey bro, these niggas over here tripping. Like, tell come a, on, cut. Tell a celebrity niggas, happy birthday crazy. Man. It's crazy. <laughs> and I see it all the time. Happy C day, bro. Keep going. <laughs> The fuck cut on know your man, y'all niggas gonna get me started. <laughs> niggas be hating, bro. Not supporting your friends and your family is fucking hate. And it's a difference between support and like like bro said, okay, you've been doing this shit 15 years, cuz all right, cuz it's time to switch lane. <laughs> it, it's a difference. Or if your friend is legit trash, hey bro, just keep pushing your pen. Like before you post that song, like get your bars up a little. Like yeah, sure, constructive yeah. criticism. But just to flat out not support your friends at all is hate. I don't care what nobody say. It's hate. Period. But let me get y'all views on this. I wish we had some women in here to talk about this one. The hypocrisy of men wanting traditional women as wives and for wives, but raising their daughters to be strong, independent women. All over social media, we got men saying women ain't traditional. Women don't have traditional values. They can't find wives and this and that and the third. But the second you start talking about their daughters and asking them what type of advice they give their daughters, it's the total opposite of what they're looking for in a wife. Every guy I know, don't depend on no man. Go out here and get your bag and, and, and so you can depend on yourself. Teaching them to be strong, independent, the very thing they preach against. And I get a lot of that in my comments. Like, I had a video damn near a year ago. My bro always called me about it. Like, nigga, you trying to get get back for this video. <laughs> well, I was saying, I tell my daughter, look, this is more important. Family, finding a good husband, a good man, a good reliable man is more important than chasing a bag in school. Yeah, that's important too. Do that. You know, we live in a, a two-income society now. Things have changed. The world has changed. We all have to adapt. But I still try to instill some traditional values. But when you talk to men and they talking about their daughter, oh, no, it's none of that. Hell no, she better not depend on no man. She better get out and get a job and get a bag. They teaching her everything they say they hating women. How y'all feel about that shit? A lot. I get, I, I get frustrated. I, I just damn near sick and tired of these conversations at this point now because it's like, you got to really accept that a lot of these women are cooked and not just cooked in the sense of just being bad, bad women. I love women, but they mindsets, they, they, they're too far gone. No, but what I'm saying like Hello. you got a daughter and you're not teaching her to become the, the woman that you say, you know, you look for in a wife, the qualities that you look for in a wife, you don't put in your daughter. Because this is what they say online. Oh, women are too masculine. Women are too independent. But mm -hmm. then they teach their daughters to be masculine. Well, they teach their daughters to be independent. But this is what I mean. They so cooked mentally, they can't teach what they don't know. And they're not even trying to reprogram or rewire themselves to learn it. There's plenty of uh, examples of women out here that's giving free game. But women want to listen to women. You know what I mean? And I mean the women in negative spaces. The same women that we've seen telling wives don't go home with their husbands. You know what I mean? These are the type of monsters that they adopt. And they don't want to listen to men as far as whatever the case it may be. So I think it's a lost cause. And this is a little off topic to what you said. This is why I say it's like really over. I just seen somebody made a post. I don't know if you've seen it. The, gr the, the lady was teaching her like the daughter was probably seven or six years old. She was fucking uh, doing waxes. Talking about, I'm teaching, my, I'm teaching my yeah. girl to be independent. She waxed about 25 vaginas today. You feel me? <laughs> and people are like, man, wait till she's 16 at least. Like, this girl, six or seven years old, you got the women cocked up. She out there putting the stuff on, peeling it. And I'm just like, you know what, because it's, it's over with. Like, you, you can't, it ain't no saving them, like J. Cole said, man. 
So I, I ain't really got too much. I, I think it's two different points in a, in a man's life. And, and um, when you take into account that most men are not the leaders within their marriage, then this makes even more sense to me. Most mm. men are not the leaders in their marriage. Therefore, the woman is the one that leads. So you more so go based off of her standards and her morals of what she feels about society and the way the kids should be raised. A lot of men go that route. That's why a lot of men are unhappy. But when you have that as the precursor for a relationship, of course you're going to then say, I want my daughter to be strong, independent, and need no man because more than likely, that's what the wife is saying. You get what I'm saying? And that's what she's like foreshadowed on the relationship. So that's what happens. When a man is single, I think that he wants his daughter to be more traditional and he has more traditional outlook on the world and for women. But then once he does become married, a lot of men become domesticated to where they're kind of just going through the motions and they start to, I feel like, want that for their their daughter, what the mother wants. And then I also think it's a protection thing. I think when you're looking for a woman, you want somebody that's traditional, but then maybe now when the when the tables turn and you're the you're the dad, you feel like, damn, I don't want her to rely on no niggas because I know how niggas can be. So it could also be a mix of that. But I think to really wrap it up and sum it up, the woman is Nine out of ten, the person has the control in the marriage. And so that's how you're going to see the daughter get raised. You think most men aren't the leaders in their marriage? Yeah, I really think that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. What, but, all, what made but you not, say that? But I, I think I, that. No, I because say, you have... Now, I want to say one thing because we always say strong women. Like, So what's really the definition of a strong woman? Because we can say masculine means she's mm -hmm. strong, but I think it takes more strength for a woman to be submissive. That takes, that takes more strength in a woman to be that way versus... Oh, it's easy for women to run around wild and do whatever the fuck they want to do. That's easier than really being taken orders under your man and moving a certain way. I think submissive women are still strong in their own ways. You know what I'm saying? It's still submissive women mm -hmm. that take care of their families, that take care of their households, that do everything that these masculine women do. They're just better at being towards their spouse than, than they are, in my opinion. Yeah, but this is what I'm getting at, though, because... From what he was saying, I'm more so speaking like single dad type shit. Oh, single I, I dad. I hear this. Yeah, yeah I, see, okay. I didn't I'm know, not I didn't specifying know you, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what I'm saying is I hear this more from the single dads than I actually do the the, the married couple. Really? Okay. Because the married couple's mom is usually around. Mm -hmm. So the single dads that's out here raising their daughters on their own, mm -hmm. they more so, I see equipping them like their sons damn near. Mm -hmm. Like how to fend for themselves. Grow up strong. Don't depend on no man. Telling her, these niggas ain't shit out here. Like, I more so see that going on okay. from the single dads. So if you're speaking on the single dads, then I mean, take the reverse of it. Look at a single mother raising a son. She raises him up to be more of a woman because that's the only way she really knows how to how to nurture and put her, her energy towards. So it's probably the same thing for single men where it's like, I get up and go to work, so you get up and go to work. And then also the daughter is probably looking at that person as a man, live life as a man, and picking up more so on those traits and attitudes compared to if she had her mother around, she might be more feminine. This is why you need both in the household, yeah. the yin and the yang. Because like you said, well, I'm just a man. I only know how to be a man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to equip you with what I believe is going to make you successful. But this is where the hypocrisy comes in at. Because these same guys are the same guys saying... Well, women ain't feminine no more. Mm -hmm. And women don't want to rely on men no more. Women want to be men. But then you will raise your daughter up to be that very woman. But I don't think I don't think <laughs> raising your daughter to be able to fend for herself is a bad thing. Has to create her to be a masculine woman. I don't think that necessarily comes out of that. Even still teaching women, because it's still the women that go to college and do what they do on their own and don't always just turn out masculine. They just turned out more successful in a sense of not chasing that. Now, I think you got to implement both. Don't let you being so independent dictate and be like, treat men like shit. That's the difference of raising them, of independence and raising them to be just like, well, fuck a man. I don't need him for nothing mm -hmm. because men ain't just there financially. You need men in every different area. We, no, need, we need both. But that's what I'm getting at. Like, yeah. when I'm talking to these guys, because I see a lot in the comments, they're literally telling their daughters, don't rely on a man. Mm -hmm. Go and get it yourself. Or if you talk to some of these guys, it's like, well, how? What's up with your daughter's dating life? Like, are you, are, are you like leading her to be a wife or whatever? Oh no, nah, my daughter ain't dating. Like, she well, on her career right now. She on her her degree right now. I think it's, and I think that's because again, <laughs> a protection thing with men, when they're when they're compared to their daughter, to when they're looking for for a partner, 
where it's like they don't even want them to do that route. I feel like parents sometimes have the ability to stunt their their children's growth or almost push them into making a wrong decision because they haven't equipped them with um, like a controlled experience almost of what this is going to be. Like, like for instance, some kids will, their parents say, I know you smoke weed, but just do it responsibly instead of saying 100% no. Because now if you don't know what it is or how to maneuver with it, you get out there your first time and you make a mistake. So I feel like it's the same thing with the single dad thing. Like you telling your daughter, just go out there full fledged and pretty much be a man knowing that that's not really the, the woman niggas is out here looking for. You get me? I feel like a lot of dads mean good, but you're crippling your daughter at the same time. Exactly. Raising her that way. You can't go out here and say, I need a fit, feminine, submissive housewife who wants to cook clean. But then you don't instill those traits in your daughter. You you give her the opposite traits. So you can't create what you're saying is the issue in the community. That's more so what I'm getting at is the hypocrisy of it. So I try not to be a hypocrite because, of course, you're not going to view your daughter the same way you view women that you are chasing romantically. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember, your daughter's going to go out here in the world and somebody's going to choose her romantically. So what type of romantic partner are you, are you creating in your daughter for another man? Because every man wants their daughter to be able to get the best man possible. Every man would want their daughter to have a quote unquote high value man. But are you even creating a high value woman that a high value man would want? Most men, when I talk to them, they're not. You're creating the total opposite of all this gender war shit that we say is the problem. So what should they be instilling? What I'm saying is the same thing that you say you want in a wife, you should be instilling that in your daughter, traditional values. But the world has changed. It's modern now. Say, so, yeah. yes, do teach your daughter to fend for herself. Do teach her to know how to survive, whether a man is there or not. But it's a thin line. You still have to have those traditional values. Okay, when you do get this man, this is how you keep him or this is how you get him. This is how you attract him. I think, I think a lot of the difference is... Two is when men raise daughters, is how they treat their daughters. Not just about teaching them to fend for themselves, but the actions that a man mm -hmm. does for his daughter when he flourishes her with gifts, when he does certain things to let her know this is the type of things you accept and you take nothing less as far as how a man should treat you. Not saying that a man is treating his daughter like, like a woman he's after, but at the same time, she needs to understand. Like once once he introduces her to certain things. These material things are not going to really matter as much when she meets a man out there with money that can't just get her without tapping into the mindsets of the man. You know what I'm saying? So I think as a, a father, if you are showing your daughter and giving her certain things and teaching her, instilling in her, like you say, traditional values or drilling her as she's growing up about what's right or teaching her about integrity, teaching her about a lot of right things, I think that's the difference of molding her to become that woman that... That, that needs to be able to hold her own and still be able to be right in the household with a man. I think that's a gift and a curse. That showering her with gift shit, I think that's a gift and a curse. Gift and a curse. Because if you get your daughter used to, I'd have met a lot of the uh, used to just getting gifts on gifts on gifts, and she goes out in the dating world expecting that, that ain't the reality in the dating I'm world. Not, no, not. no, not, not saying what you're saying is wrong, but what I'm saying is I'd have met women that, who that grew extent, up like yeah. that, and they come like, well, my dad... He already got me used to this lifestyle. I'm not accepting nothing less. But the realistic view of the world is most men can't afford to do that or provide that lifestyle that your dad did. And I'm not your see, dad. See, but see, when <laughs> and I'm not your dad. Yeah, that's yeah, another but part that when I say have. when I say when I say that when I say showing her better things, you can automatically now in your imagination you can just think, oh, she getting flowers every week. She getting this. She getting that. No, I'm just meaning far as. Giving her certain things that showing her your appreciation. If a man is not showing his appreciation to a woman, then what is, what is she doing with him in the first place? It could be a gift and a curse, but it could be it could be worse if she gets around a man that does have that money, and he's flowering her just off of that, and got her twisted and got her mind all wind up just off of money. How many females do we know that flock to these niggas with money? And it's still females that got the right mindset where it's like, well, I don't care about the money. You know what I'm saying? But majority of women are going to go after the man with the money, and that's just how it goes regardless. They're not going to care about what type of man he is. So he could be treating her like shit with money, but if she's already accustomed to certain things, this is not going to make her, this is not going to flatter her. 
what type of man are you internally? This is what I'm getting at of instilling certain things in her. And that's why I said, if you're orchestrating her mind at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I, that's what I was going to yeah. say. I think it's more so yeah. the values than, than showing her the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to want to spoil your kids anyway. But just look up the word spoil. That's not a good word. We turn it into a good word. Spoiling your kids is actually turning them bad. You're not supposed to spoil your spoil kids. Right, you got to teach them delayed gratification. No, I'm not going to give you everything. This is why most people who grew up rich and say, man, my parents, they didn't give me shit. Why y'all thinking they just giving me everything is because you have to. Because even though I have it, you still got to work for it. Because if I just give you everything, you have, you, you have no drive to go work for anything. Then Thanks. you get in the real world and... The real world ain't giving you shit other than what you work for, what you what you earn. You, you'll Thanks. get a warped view of reality. Like you said, I'm not your fucking dad. I yeah. don't care what your dad did. So, but what? But what's your husband gonna do then? Because if we talk about women becoming in a marriage, then what what should she expect then? She so, shouldn't. She shouldn't expect yeah. shit from her husband. Nah, I think I think it's the. I think it's the the knowing of this shit is some sort of conditional. There's there, this is this is conditional to a certain degree. Like, with your mother or your father, that shit is unconditional. Meaning they can do no wrong, you can do no wrong to stop the gift giving, to stop the help, whatever the case is. In a relationship, you can't. So, if I'm flourishing you, then you have to do X, Y, and Z. If you're not doing X, Y, and Z, then you're not getting flourished. Compared to your father, whether you act up or not, you might still get the gift. You might. St I'm going to still... Pick you up when you make the, the nah, same mistake twenty but, times but over. If et that's the case, you know you're saying? not instilling the right things in her. Then, if you if you just giving, 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 regardless if she's not acting right or she's not doing what she's doing, no, I don't I mean, mean in that is. sense. Just just oh, you just need to spoil her because she's doing this. If you're instilling her right and raising her right, then she does deserve certain things. In mm -hmm. my mind, I don't know how everybody else probably look at it, but no, nah, she does. Think, no, no, I, I yeah. definitely think the, a woman does deserve that. But I'm, I was just getting that more so as to. That's what I mean by it's different from being your dad to then your man. Because, again, if you're not acting right, whatever, he might still hook you up. Or, like I said, you might make the same mistake over and over and over again. He's still going to be there for you. I'm not going to be. Yeah, because most dads, you know the daughter is the soft spot. Yeah. So, like you said, she can do no wrong. So, he's spoiling. Most fathers are spoiling their daughters regardless. Like you yeah. said, whether they fucking up or whatever. Oh, she get she give you them, them big brown eyes and it's <laughs> over with. You know what I'm saying? So, now she go through life thinking she can manipulate men the same way she manipulates her father, and she's going to get hit with a reality check. This is why I'm like, okay, it got to be a line. Yeah, show her, don't take no less than this. I'm going to show you how a real man's supposed to operate. I'm going to be the change I want to see. I'm going to be the example that, 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 that I want to see you with. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, where I believe a lot of men go wrong, they forget to instill those values like he's mm -hmm. talking about. Okay, you got to be this type of woman, this, this, and this. This is what we look for in women. Like, that's a conversation most men don't want to have with their daughters. Mm -hmm. Most men don't want to talk with their daughters young about dating. Most men actually believe their daughter's going to go to 18 and never date. They're going to go to 25 and never date. Focus on school and your career. They just block that part out. And that's why most women talk to them. They probably never even talk to their dad about sex yeah. or dating or men. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like a taboo topic with your daughter, especially when she's young. You like I don't even want to talk about that shit with her because I can't even imagine it. Because we so we so um, we so fucking uh, what's the damn word? We done dealt with so many hoes out yeah, here. Like, huh. We like shell shocked. <laughs> like oh my god, please don't turn out like these bitches. Yeah. I don't even want to talk to you about it. I see that a lot. What I find crazy though about because this topic is what you're, you know, how you're speaking about how men are raising up their daughters. What I find interesting is that I think overall, um, we've became more of a feminized society where it's frowned upon now for a man to kind of push his daughter up to be a wife. I feel like back in the day, that's how it was. Like you were, you were, you know, instilling your daughter with the values as well as the mother to, you know, find a partner. But now it's more so like. I don't need to find a partner. I need to find my career. I need to find whatever it is to fulfill my purpose on this earth instead of love or marriage being that being that purpose. And I think that's due to, again, women having more control over the household compared to men over, over time. But that's what I mean. Like, we always speak about, I'm not just speaking in the sense of she's a man she's dating. I'm speaking as a man that she looks for mm -hmm. long term. A man that she's looking for long term is going to want to treat her right. He's going to want to do certain things. 
That's for what sure. I mean. Expect that. Not just, oh, because you dating, just to be expecting niggas to do this and do that. Mm-hmm. Fuck no. But at the same time, <laughs> a man that you dealing with long term and you see yourself having kids with or doing something down the line with, yes, yeah, she should be treating you good and you should be expecting that. In my mind. No, I hear what you're yeah. saying. It's just, it, man, it's one of them wobblers where it's a fine line because a lot of guys will get online Talk this high power shit. Women need to do this. Women need to be that. Feminine, fit, this and that. But when it comes to their daughters, they not instilling none of that. Like, you got to look at other cultures that who still have traditional ways. Your daughter landing a husband was the prize. For you as a father, mission complete. I got my daughter married off to a good man, a great man, a successful man. Mission complete as a dad. That changed to now... I got my daughter off to college and on a route to a good career. Mm -hmm. The whole man, husband, family part ain't even a part of the equation in today's society. As far as parenting go, they talk about you bad. If you even say, yeah, I want, I want that for my daughter. Mm -hmm. You a bad dad to say, I want my daughter to my bad. I want my daughter (laughs) (laughs) because it's shit crazy. You are viewed as a bad father to say, I want my daughter to grow up, marry a great successful man and have a, 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 a family. A strong nuclear family. You're labeled a deadbeat almost. See, but it's hard. It's, it's crazy. It's really hard for a single father to even to fault him for, like you, like you. Back to what you were just saying. It's not like men raise women to be women and women raise men to be men. Yeah. You need you need the women for that. If we go to traditional, the mothers was there to do all of that. The father didn't have to. The father didn't have to do shit but pick the man. And see his qualities. Yeah, yeah, so it, it didn't it didn't matter. The, the the mama already instilled all the femininity that she needed. Facts. And and the father did the discipline side and he picked the man like, oh nah, that ain't that ain't you ain't you ain't the type of man I am. You ain't fucking with my daughter. Next. Like, or you ain't got your shit together, you can't fuck with my daughter. Next. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So that's the difference. So it's hard to fault single men for raising them to be like, damn. Why am I here doing this alone? The best way I know to do this is to do it this way. He don't have no real blueprint. He don't have the 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 woman in the household. Or it depends, too, if she's going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? He could be a single father, but is he really a single father or is he just not living with the baby mama? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, she, is she extinct out the equation and he's doing yeah, this? So it's, 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 it's a little different. So, so I, I think <laughs> even when it comes to that, you got to keep her around yeah. women. If you got sisters, that's setting a good example. If they got a grandma, if they, you got your mom and bring her around them type of things to be able to instill that because I don't think a man can fully do that himself. So in other words, you need a mom and a dad in the home. Man, you, uh, that's the best yin way to yin. go. You need You need, need the nuclear family or it's just, it just don't turn out right. Yeah. Even though the odds are in favor of single dads, it's still better to have mom around because I think a lot of dudes in the red pill space get caught up in that. Yeah, they turn out better with dad. They turn out better with dad. Yeah, but guess what? They're going to turn out better with dad and mom. Yeah. Together. No matter what. No matter fucking what. No, I think this is a that's a that's a good conversation because it, it's it's man, it's relevant right now. And I think that's very true. But yeah, man, y'all 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 share, like, subscribe to the channel. We done went way over the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Best podcast in the world. We stamping that. Hey Scotty, man, I'm on your ass, man. Tap the fuck in. Cause they saying you ain't even from LA and you out here dividing LA, shitting on the city. Nah, we ain't going for that, bro. So anybody that knows Scotty. Did you go to high school with Cub? What middle school Cub went to? What what church Cub went to? Where he hung out at? What parties he was at? Somebody in the comments let us know. Tell Scotty to tap in. Because I don't like the way bro be talking about the city. We trying to unite the city, and he he dividing the city. So y'all tap in, but y'all got any final words, man? Yeah, Long Beach finest, man. Long Beach stand up. That's what it is. Long Beach, stand the fuck up. Stop playing with us. The yes, viral way. Bang. Ain't no handouts, I did it from the ground up yeah. In the streets, dug in hardest where they found us exactly. Got a problem, nigga, watch my troopers mount up My bitches bang too, and you a lame though You niggas ain't outside, yeah, we came through You want your lights up, we put you on the shade